In this video, we're going to complete example one. We're going to solve the following equations. Now, I've actually got six equations that I'm going to solve. On this slide, we have questions A and B. I've got other questions on other slides. We go all the way to question F. Now, looking at question A, I can either add or subtract first, or I can multiply or divide first. So I think I'll show you both ways. So we'll start by adding two to both sides. This will cancel out the minus two, leaving us with a over five on the left. And then four plus two is six. The second step is to multiply every term by five. So we're going to multiply the first term by five and the second term by five. This will cancel the five below the a, leaving us with just a. And then 6 times 5 is 30. So we get A equals 30. All right, so let's complete this question again. And this time we will multiply first and then add last. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by 5 because this is going to cancel the 5 below the A. And we have to do this to every term. So we have to multiply the 2 by 5 and the 4 by 5 as well. Now the fives are going to cancel, leaving us with a. And then two times five is 10, and four times five is 20. Now we're going to add 10 once on both sides of the equal sign, which is going to cancel out the 10 next to the a, and a will be 20 plus 10, which is 30. As we can see, it's perfectly fine to multiply first as long as you multiply every term. So we had three terms that had to be multiplied by five. Let's now move on to question B. You may notice that we've got pronumerals on both sides of the equal sign. We've got a 6C on the left-hand side and a 3C on the right-hand side. So what do we do in this situation? Well, the best thing to do is to subtract. And we're going to subtract 3c. And the reason we're doing that is it's going to cancel out the 3c on the right hand side. But because we've done that, we have to subtract 3c on the left hand side of the equal sign as well. Now 6c minus 3c is 3c. We've still got our plus 8 and we still have our 26. Now you might notice that by subtracting this 3c, you've made your life a lot easier because now we've only got one term that has a pronumeral in it. So let's subtract 8 now on both sides of the equal sign, just so that we can cancel out that plus 8 there. That's going to leave us with 3c on the left, and 26 minus 8 is 18. Now, because this is 3 times c, we're going to perform the opposite operation. We're going to divide 3 to every term. This will cancel out the 3, leaving us with just c, and 18 divided 3 is 6. Now, moving on to question c, and one of the tips that I mentioned earlier was that brackets are a pain to work with, and as soon as you see brackets, you should expand them straight away. So we'll do that first. We're going to multiply the 4 by the b and the 2. 4 times b is 4b. And 4 times 2 is 8. This is all over 10. And it equals negative 6. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to cancel out this 10, and that means we need to multiply by 10. And we're going to multiply every term by 10. And this is where some people make a mistake. A lot of people try to multiply the 4b by 10 as well as the 8 by 10. Because this is one single fraction, it's also one single term. So I'm only multiplying it once. That will cancel the 10 below, leaving us with 4b minus 8, and negative 6 times 10 is negative 60. Next, I'm going to add the 8 to both sides of the equal sign. This will cancel out the minus 8. 
leaving us with 4b on the left and negative 60 plus 8 is negative 52. Next I would like to divide this 4 and quite often people write divide 4 like so but I would like to move away from that. What I find looks better is if you write it as a fraction over 4. That's the same as saying divide 4 and then cancelling the 4 which leaves us with b. And finally negative 52 divide 4 will give us negative 13. Let's now move on to question D and question D at first glance looks quite simple but a question like this can really throw someone and what really throws them is that the denominator is a pronumeral whereas we're used to denominators being numbers. Anyway let's start by subtracting 5. Usually people if they start with a question like this they would subtract the 5 first so we'll do that first because it will make this uh, a little more simple. Uh, it's going to give us 3 over y on the left and 10 on the right. Now usually when people look at this they instinctively want to get rid of the 3 because they're trying to leave y on its own and, and that's not the approach that you want to take. The approach that you want to take is, is one of the hints I've mentioned in an earlier video and that is that fractions are a pain to work with and we want to get rid of the fraction. So rather than focusing on getting rid of the 3, let's start by focusing on getting rid of the fraction because that's the real problem here. And we're going to do that by timesing it by y, which is going to leave us with 3. And then 10 times y is 10y. Now, this hasn't solved the equation, but it's made it easier for us to solve because now all we have to do is to divide both terms by 10, which leaves y on its own. So y must be 3 over 10, which I'll just write the other way around, y equals 3 over 10. Now it's better to leave it as a fraction. I'd rather it as 3 over 10 than 0 0.3. All right, let's now move on to our last two questions. We'll start with question E. Now this can look challenging for some people, but if you remember, one of the tips that I gave was that fractions are a pain to work with, and we want to get rid of those fractions and we can actually do that quite easily. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this fraction by x plus 1 and I'm, I'm just going to put that in brackets because I'm multiplying it by the whole expression x plus 1 and I need to do this to every term so I also need to multiply the 5 by x plus 1 in brackets as well. Now this is going to cancel out the whole of x plus 1 which leaves us with x minus 3 which is great we've got rid of that fraction as I said fractions are a pain to work with so we just want to get rid of those fractions that's what we're focusing on here on the right hand side we've got 5 bracket x plus 1 now another one of my tips that I gave was that brackets are also a pain to work with and the best way to fix that is just to expand the brackets, which will get rid of the brackets. 5 times x is 5x, and 5 times 1 is 5. And we've got x minus 3 on the left. Now we've got pronumerals on both sides of the equal sign. We've got the x on the left and the 5x on the right. Now usually I would subtract 5x on both sides and the reason I usually do that is because I want to cancel out pronumerals on the right hand side. Now the issue here is that x minus 5x is negative 4x and, and that's actually perfectly fine it's just a little annoying working with negatives so I'm going to do something a little different rather than subtracting 5x I'm going to subtract x and the reason I'm going to do that is it's actually going to cancel x out on the left hand side which leaves me with 4x on the right hand side. Now I know we normally like pronumerals to be on the left but I'd much prefer one on the right hand side 
so that I can avoid having a negative. I've still got a plus 5 and I've still got a negative 3. Now I'd like to get this 4x on its own so I'm going to subtract the 5 on both sides of the equal sign just so that I can cancel out that plus 5. That leaves me with 4x on the right and negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. Next I'm going to divide both terms by 4 so that I can get x on its own. Negative 8 divided 4 is negative 2, which must equal x. And I'm just going to switch the sides and say that x equals negative 2. We'll now move on to question f. And you'll notice we've got quite a lot of brackets here. And as I've mentioned before, brackets are a pain to work with. And as soon as I see brackets, I just want to expand them so that I can get rid of those brackets. Now these are monic quadratics, and if you don't know how to expand monic quadratics, then you actually need to look up one of my previous videos that show you how to do this. Anyway, let's expand them now. First of all, n times n will give us n squared. n times negative 1 will give us minus 1n. Positive 3 times n will give us plus 3n and finally positive 3 times negative 1 will give us minus 3. Let's expand the next set of brackets. We've got n plus 2 squared and this is known as a perfect square. We square the first term which is n so we get n squared. We then square the last term which is 2. 2 squared is 4 so we get plus 4. We then multiply the two terms, so n times 2 is 2n, and then we double them, or times them by 2, giving us 4n. That will give us the middle term here. We need to simplify the expression on the left here just a little bit. We get n squared, negative 1n plus 3n will give us 2n plus 2n minus 3 equals n squared plus 4n plus 4. Now for a lot of you, you might look at this and go, oh, this is really challenging, really difficult, but it's not. We're going to focus on adding and subtracting, and we're just going to subtract n squared on both sides, and that's going to cancel out both sets of n squared, which makes our equation a whole lot easier. 2n minus 3 equals 4n plus 4. Now I could subtract 4n next in order to cancel the 4n, but if I do that I'm going to get a negative because 2n minus 4n is negative 2n. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to subtract 2n. So I'm going to cancel out the 2n on the left hand side just so that I get 2n on the right hand side, so I get a positive. 4n minus 2n is 2n, plus the 4, and negative 3 on the left. Now I'm going to subtract the 4, because I'm trying to isolate this 2n. And I'm going to subtract the 4 on the left-hand side as well. This will cancel out the plus 4, isolating my 2n like so. Now, negative 3 minus 4 will give us negative 7. I now want to get rid of that 2, so I'm going to divide 2 to both terms. What's negative 7 divide 2? Well, it's negative 3.5, so n will equal negative 3.5, and I'm going to write it so that n is on the left. n equals negative 3.5. Anyway, that concludes our video on example 1. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.